What's up guys, today I wanna to talk about ND filters. Now something special about the Nissi ND filter is that it is true color, so you're not gonna get some tinting, but we'll talk about that in a minute. First I wanna go over what an ND filter does at its base level. ND filters are like sunglasses for your lens. They darken the whole image so that you can get more bokeh in your background. Now in the photo world, this isn't really something you need to have. Um, it's very situational for what you would need it for. But when you're doing video, it's extremely important for bright settings like this. If you're looking for ND filters, you probably know that most of your settings on video are kind of set. So right now I'm shooting at 4K 24 FPS, which means that my shutter speed needs to be somewhere around 50 to get that rule of doubling your frames per second. And my native ISO on this camera is 800. So really I only have my aperture to play with if I wanna get not blown out highlights. So I've got the blue sky in there right now, but you can literally see everything behind me. So what the ND filter helps with is darkening the whole image so that your aperture can come down and you can get a more bokeh or a blurry background. So just for reference, you can take something like this and turn it into something like this. Now you can see the background's pretty blurred out. I'm more in focus, I'm standing out in the image. It just looks a lot better, in my opinion. What makes the Nissi ND 1 to 5 so much different than some of its competitors is the true color factor. So if you get a like KNF concept or some cheaper option on Amazon, you're probably gonna have some kind of green tint on there. Uh, often it's green, sometimes it's another color. And this isn't a big deal, like you can fix it in post, but having the true color kind of takes out the need to do any extra work in post, which I like, because the less I have to do in post, the better. Just keep that in mind when you're looking around online. Now this one is expensive. Uh, I believe it came in around 200 bucks. I will throw up a double check of the price on the screen there but overall it was way more expensive than some of the other options, but it is variable. It's got excellent build quality. Um, the throw is really nice. As you can see, it's pretty quick, um, but it's also firm. So it's not like I'm missing where I want it to be. Uh, but one thing I have found about this filter that's kind of frustrating is when you are stacking it on top of another filter. I took my polarizer off for this video just because I wanted to make sure I was representing only this filter. But sometimes I stack on the ND in front of my polarizer and this ND filter has this like step up ring above the actual variable ring and the filters behind it are even smaller than that so it's really hard to adjust just my polarizer. Um, I really have to hold down with both hands one on the ND filter and then kind of squeeze my thumb in there to get the other one. So that's a little frustrating honestly once you have your polarizer set you don't really need to make a whole lot of changes so it's not the biggest deal in the world but that was just something I wanted to keep in mind because it is pretty frustrating for me personally. Now the advantages of having something that's variable is that if you've got like a partly cloudy day and your clouds, your daylight's kind of changing in and out, you'll be able to adjust with that. That being said, this is a pretty standard sunny day in Northern Idaho and it is almost not enough filter for this amount of sun. So I've got the one to five. I kind of recommend if you're in a very sunny place that you get something more than that. Um, I will be wanting to get something more than that in the future because on the brightest parts of the day, I'm finding this not being able to come down to 2.8 all the time and get the correct exposure that I want. Now in terms of photography, something this can be useful for is if you're doing something with flash uh, I like to do a lot of flowers with flash or bugs, some kind of macro photography. A lot of times their budget flashes aren't gonna keep up with a shutter speed over 250. So you're kind of locked into 250. And if you wanna have your ISO not extremely high, 
um, you're gonna lock that in probably around four to 800 as well. Typically with macro photography, you're going to be F4 to F8 anyway, so the ND filter doesn't need to be as strong in certain bright conditions. But when you're trying to isolate your subject with just your flash and kind of get a darker background, the ND filter really helps with that. So when you throw the ND filter on, you can really darken the whole image again and then just brighten up your subject, which makes for some really cool flower photos, in my opinion. So there are a lot of options out there. You can't really go wrong with too many of them. Uh, like I said, there is that color tinting kind of challenge that you'll have with some of the cheaper ones, but so far I've been really happy with the Nissi. So if you're looking for an easy way to start upping your video quality, I definitely recommend an ND filter, especially if you're doing a lot of stuff outside. Inside, you can kind of mess with lighting a little bit more. Uh, when you're outside, you're very limited. And when you got a nice bright orange light in the sky, uh, you gotta do what you can to adjust to that. And the ND filter makes that really easy. That's about all I have to say about it though. I wanna keep this video short and sweet, but I am gonna leave you with a few before and afters with the ND filter on and off. And you can spot how big of a difference bringing your aperture down helps with your video quality. Do you have an ND filter? Do you have the Nissi ND filter? Let me know what you think in the comments. But until the next video, take care.